In this video, we'll be adding the configurator to your NAC app. If you haven't seen the interview with Norman, then I'd recommend clicking on the link and watching that through first. If you have, then you'll be aware that KTL is an open source code library. And I'd like to make it very clear to start with that although NAC are very supportive of KTL and they are aware of it, they don't support it. So please don't raise any tickets if you have any questions or queries directly with NAC support. You can post them onto GitHub. There is a forum, which I will show you in a second. Or if you want to, I think we're quite comfortable with things going on to the forum and one of the team, including myself, which I'm not really part of the team, but extended team will be able to dive in and help. So with regards to that, I would certainly recommend heading over to GitHub and I'll put some links in the description. So this link here is taking you to the changelog. Uh, once you signed up for GitHub, which is free, then I would recommend subscribing to this feed. That way you'll get any notifications of any updates, fixes and new features. Uh, when you're on this page, I recommend once again sorting this by the newest first. I had it sorted by the oldest for a long time before I realized there was a button here and had to keep scrolling to the bottom. The other link in the description is to this page, which has lots of information on it so please feel free to digest this at your leisure but one of the things i want to show is the keyword list and when you're uh, looking at keywords these are really powerful these call the code this is kind of the essence of how ktl works now is that you can just by simply adding a keyword such as uh, underscore ar um, you can do an auto refresh and the n is the amount of seconds um, that have, uh, will elapse before a table refreshes. So this keyword uh, calls the code in the code library. So keywords and the other thing to talk through before we do the configurator is actually in the configurator, and I'll provide the link for this, um, are some main feature switches. Now, at this moment in time, because I'm also relatively new to KTL, I'm not completely sure about what every single one of these does but we will walk through them, but feel free to explore. Um, the, uh, there's a little question mark on every single section which takes you to the relevant page in GitHub to give you more information. So anyway, to set up KTL, it's super simple. All you need to do is, first of all, just put the application name in here because you can save this configuration. It will, it will save locally, so each time you make a change, you'll get a little pop-up here to say it's been successfully changed. Um, and you can save it manually here as well and you'll get the confirmation. And it's saving it just to your local PC. Um, so if you do clear your browser cache, um, I would recommend uh, exporting the file out so you can import it in a later date. Now, um, it doesn't affect KTL once it's installed in your application. It's just you can update this configuration and then copy it and paste it back into your NAC app. Anyway, so what I would once again recommend is put the uh, app name in here. You have to leave this ticked um, for the first time because this is the actually the loader. That's the first few lines of code which load KTL. Um, put your name in. You can put an email address if you wish. Leave these two ticks, which is these these two ticked, which is the version info bar, and then on the main feature switches, you need to show the title to be able to see the info bar, and leave everything else unchecked. If you scroll through, there's lots of fields for customization, and there's a few more fields as you scroll down. Just once again, uncheck everything as you go, and then when you get to the bottom, there is a blue button, which says generate configuration. And then you can copy that to your clipboard, head over into your NAC app, into your JavaScript. And this is very important. You have to put it above any other code that you've got. It needs to go on the first line. Currently, the whole KTL configuration is 175 lines. So when I paste that in, I'm right down the bottom. And Norman's very kindly put a little note here that your app specific code goes here. So it goes beneath the bracket. It's really important. If you don't put that there, um, KTL won't function properly. So it's the, it needs to load first of all. And that's it, you save your code. And um, before we launch the app, go into records and make sure if you haven't got a developer ro role, um, create a developer role and add the developer role to whoever you wish to be able to be administering KTL inside your app. So for myself, I've got a developer role and then over into your live app, do a refresh 
And once you've refreshed, you'll get the KTL info version in the top right hand corner. So here you can see we are now on KTL version 0.26.2. And if we head back over to uh, the change log, you can see that the last version is So as you can see in the top right hand corner we now have a little card that says KTL version 26.2 and that has just changed and it's speaking with Norm and the last update was three days ago we were on 26.1 but we've made some changes and that hasn't been updated on the um, discussion board yet. So we are now on 26.2 and if you click on that you'll get a pop-up card here with a lot more options which we'll also walk through. So that's it. In the next video, I'll be showing you how to set up one of the key switches to add uh, user filters. So join me on that one and I'll see you soon.